I don't know if you saw the new Spider-Verse movie across the Sp Spider, what is it called? Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, I think that was. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Animation was great. The colors were great. And this scene, this is from the trailer, so it's no spoiler. I didn't, I'm not spoiling anything because it's on the trailer. Uh, I, I love this picture, this frame. It just looks great. You know, you have Spider-Gwen standing on the wall. You can see the city. You can see Miles looking out the window. And, and I appreciate the artistry of it, but I also want to use it as a physics problem. So I want to use this as a physics problem to look at the forces on Spider-Gwen to stand on the wall like that, because it's kind of a great idea. So let's jump over here. I printed out this picture. And I, I, I know it's a little, I wanted to be able to draw on it, so I printed it out really light colored. Uh, so you may think, okay, what forces are acting on Spider-Gwen to do this move to stand on this wall like that, like a boss? Um, well, we know that we have a center of mass somewhere around there, and there's a gravitational force pulling down. So I'll write that as mg. And then you can say, well, she's, she's using her spider ability to stick to the wall. So maybe there's some force from the wall pushing up on her like that. And that, that's a good idea, right? And if she's in equilibrium, then the following things must be true. F net in the x direction has to be equal to zero, because her acceleration in the x direction is zero, and f net in the y direction has to be equal to zero, because her acceleration in the y direction is also equal to zero. And if we do this, if in this particular case, these two forces would have to be the same, right? Because that's the only two forces in the y direction, they have to be equal and opposite. But we have to also consider uh, the rotational motion. So if she doesn't rotate, then the net torque I'm going to use the scalar version about some point O it has to also be zero. And it doesn't really matter where you pick this point O to be. If I pick this point right here to calculate the torque, and remember, torque we can calculate as R, F, sine theta, where R is the, the, the distance from the pivot point to the, where the force is applied, and that's the force, and theta is the angle between those two. So in this case, this would be my R value right there, whatever that may be and theta would be 90 degrees, so sine of 90 is one. And this would be a positive torque, right? Because we'd want to make it her rotate this way. So it's a positive torque. And this would be a negative torque because we'd want to make it rotate that way. But these two cannot add up to zero. These two torques cannot be zero because if this force is the same magnitude as this force, but with a larger R, then it's going to be a greater torque. So this would cause her to rotate this way, which is what would happen. She would she would fall down. And if you pick this point over here as your point of to rotate, then this force would have no torque because it's at the pivot point, so R would be zero, and this port would have a negative torque, and that would cause her to rotate down too. So no matter what you do with these two forces, you cannot get the total torque to be equal to zero, and we want the total torque to be equal to zero. So we can fix this, and we will, by assuming that there is some contact I'll draw it over here a little bit further away. Uh, contact distance on the wall. She's not touching at one point, but at two points. So if that's the case, then I can draw two more forces. One is going to be a force this way. And this is on Spider-Gwen. I'll call this FS. That's the spider force, right? That's whatever force it is that, that clings to the wall. And then, and that, if I think about that, uh, it would also, could possibly, uh, create a torque about the system. You know, let's say that, I, I we have to pick where this is, but these two points can't both be in line with that. Let's assume that this top is in line with that, just to make things easier. So this bottom point's not in line with that. And if I push this way with a force in, right, that's gonna be the normal force, now, if we pick this point as our point to calculate the torque, that's my point O, then this force and that force exert no torque, but this one's gonna create a positive torque because there is some distance between these two and this will be a negative torque and those two torques can indeed add up to zero. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write down the equations, we're gonna calculate everything and we're gonna see what kind of force, spider force this would take for her to hold, stand on the wall. So let's just write these out. These, I'm going to write out my F net X. F net X. I have two forces in the X direction. It's going to be N. This is my X 
and y, and that's my point O. So it's going to be n minus the spider force equals zero, f net y net y is going to be equal to the wall force minus mg because it's in the negative direction. And now let's call this uh, the distance L. That's the distance from the, the wall to her center mass. And I'm going to call this distance S. It's going to be very short. So in terms of the torque, torque net about point O, it's going to be this torque. They're both R is L distance and there's 90 degree angle between these two. So it's just going to be equal to negative L mg. It's negative not because g is negative, it's negative because it would be a clockwise rotation. And then this is going to be plus n times s times sine theta. So I have these three equations and I want to I want to solve for, let's say solve for the spider force. I want to solve for that. So over here I have n and over here I have n. Let's solve this for n and plug it in over there. Oh, this is equal to zero. So I get n equals fs, and if I plug that in over here, I get negative l mg plus fs s equals zero. And so I, from that, I can I can solve for the spider force. I don't actually need the wall force. I already know what it is, right? It's mg. So let's do that. The spider force, if I add that to both sides, I get fs s equals lmg. So the spider force is going to be lmg over s. Now we need to pick some values. I'm going to go ahead and guess. Let's say l is equal to one meter. Um, then what about that, that distance between the front of her foot and the back of her foot? She's kind of on the ball of her feet. So I'm going to say, let's say s is, I don't know, 0 0.05 meters, so 5 centimeters. I mean, maybe that's, that's too small, maybe it's too big. You can change it up to whatever you want. Uh, the mass, I'm going to say she has a mass of 55 kilograms. She's, you know, she's just a teenager and all. Um, and, but that's totally a guess. And then I and G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So all I have to do is put that in over here. Where's my calculator? Where did I put my calculator? Here it is. Calculator. Okay, so spider force equals um, L, one meter, M, 55, G, 9.8, divided by 0 0.05. And I left off my units because I don't want to write them. Clear. So 55 times 9.8 divided by 0 0.05 equals, I get, one zero seven eight zero newtons. Let's just compare that to the wall force or mg. Mg is going to be equal to 55 times 9.8. So clear 55 times 9.8. That's her weight. That's 539 newtons. So we're talking quite a large distance, 20 times greater, right? 10 twice as great, yeah, 20 times greater. So that's this, that spider force has to be 20 times equal to her weight. And that's just, it's not real. It doesn't matter that it's not real, it's still fun, right? Uh, but that's what you'd have to do in order to make her stay on the wall like that. The end.